just do it. Just jump in, take action. Like you will see fruit. Don't be afraid. That fear of failure literally is like a magnet to the ground that's holding you down. You have to like pull against it because you will go far. Welcome to Multifamily Insights. I'm your host, John Kasman, and I want to thank you for joining us for another great episode. If you're enjoying this show, do me one favor, leave us a rating and review. We want to hear from you. We want to know what you love about the show, but we are also open to criticism or feedback. If you want to give that, let us know what we can do to make the show work harder for your investing goals. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. We've got a great show today. We're going to be talking to Dr. Income. Hey, Zamama. They say you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So if you want to grow as a multifamily investor, you have to spend more time with other multifamily investors. And an easy way to do that is to join our apartment investing mastermind group today. Just go to kasmancapital.com and click on the mastermind button. Now, as a part of this group, you'll get access to expert trainings, group coaching calls, industry news and updates, as well as all of our webinars and workshops, including our three-hour workshop on raising capital. Again, if you want to be around other multifamily investors that can help you scale your portfolio today and grow your network, make sure you're a part of the Apartment Investing Mastermind. Just go to kasmancapital.com and click on the Mastermind button today. Dr. Inkum Azamama is a visionary behind Phoenix Capital Investment. Now, Phoenix Capital is dedicated to helping busy professionals both in and out of the healthcare field grow their wealth through passive investing in commercial multifamily real estate. Now, Dr. Income is a board certified emergency medicine physician practicing in Tennessee with over seven years of experience. She is also a real estate investor with a portfolio consisting of over 300 units as a limited partner. And recently she has marked a significant milestone closing on her first deal as a general partner. Let's welcome to the show, Dr. Income Azamama. Thank you so much. John, for having me. I really appreciate it. I'm really excited to be here. I've been watching and following you. And so the honor to be here today just tickles me. So thank you so much. Well, listen, I'm excited to talk to you as well. We had the chance to meet each other in person uh, about a month ago uh, at the MFIN Con and loved hearing a little bit more about your story. And I obviously just went over your bio, uh, but I did that at a high level. So why don't you take two minutes and fill in some of those gaps? Okay. So like you said, I'm an ER physician and I've been doing that for almost eight years, seems like forever. But I learned that like we are skilled, very skilled at practice in medicine, but no one really taught us about finance. No one really taught us how to manage our wealth. Um, and I realized that was a problem. And especially around COVID, I realized that like some of us needed to get second jobs. Um, lifestyle creep really took effect and people just didn't have money. Um, and that's really when I started learning about multifamily investing. Um, I started as a limited partner um, because at that point I thought, let me just see what's out there. I went to a conference and I heard another group uh, speaking and I, I was like, what is multifamily investing? And I just... I just learned. I sat in the sidelines initially and I said, tell me, tell me everything that you can tell me. And then I jumped in as a limited partner, did my first deal, second deal. And I got proof of concept. I realized that this was truly a way that you could build wealth um, and still do what we love as physicians, as healthcare professionals. And that's when, um, that's when it all came together. And that's when I built Phoenix. I started learning. I started I started with books, then I moved to podcasts, and I moved to, you know, boot camp, and then intensives, and then masterminds, and I just soaked it all. And the more I did, the more I realized that the people around me, colleagues, family, friends, healthcare professionals, they wanted to know more. And they were like, in Kim, tell us what you're doing. I realized, John, that I had, like, we have the resources, but we didn't have access. And that's where I felt like I could really be a part. I could, like, really give value and educate um, our profession, our busy professionals in and out of the healthcare field that this is something that we can do, you know, because the idea, you know, or the, the goal behind it is to grow well so that you can practice medicine, so you can buy back your time, freedom, family, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, and I think this is the doorway to it. So I'm, I'm so excited that like I, you know, I learned about it. I'm so excited that I jumped in. I, I'm excited that like I truly got proof of concept and now I'm teaching others and I'm seeing others, you know, come alongside this journey with me. And it's been really, really exciting. Like It's been truly I, exciting. I really enjoy hearing you talk about your your journey because you, you hit on so many key aspects, right? From an education standpoint, yeah. you mentioned going to events, you know, learning more about this space, you know, investing, 
reading books, listening to podcasts, joining masterminds, taking action. And I think that's a really yeah. important step, right? It's one thing to hear about this or to know about it. And if you're listening to the show, you know about the power of real estate investing, right? But what else are you doing to move that forward? And you talked about investing your time, investing your money to educate yes. yourself further and further so that you could grow more and more comfortable getting proof of concept and eventually turn this into a business and not just to make money, but to yeah. allow you to do the thing that you enjoy doing, which is practicing medicine and helping other people while you're, yeah. you know, you're, you're kind of taking part on your own journey. You're helping other people with theirs. Um, I want to go back though, because you said something that was really interesting. You said that, you know, uh, you were practicing medicine, COVID hit and COVID obviously impacted all of us in a little bit of yeah. different ways, but you talked about lifestyle creep. And I'm curious to hear like what that was like for you, because I imagine that, you know, as a physician, you've done everything that, you know, you're taught to do, you know, going to college, getting a great education, you know, highly educated doctor and lifestyle creep is kicking in and you're looking at your finances and it, it must have been, you know, somewhat of a challenge. So just talk to us a little bit more about that. So so I'll tell you. So I started. When I when I was done with college med school residency, I came out with a ton of student debt. And that's just the it just happens. Like it's med school is expensive. And and I know that I knew that and I knew that going in. And so in the beginning, I was living below my means. And I thought because I wanted to, I do things differently now because that two percent interest rate is way better than, but I but at that time I wanted to pay it down. And so I was doing everything that I could to pay that down. But when you are done with residency, when you're a physician, there's a lot of good that comes out of it. But there's also that idea that like, I have to live up to the standard and I have to live up to, um, to this name. And sometimes we fall into that trap and that is the bigger house, the bigger car, um, you know, the, the change in location and where we live, you know, like our expenses, for some reason, it just quadruples. And I don't necessarily, I don't buy that. Um, and I, I, and I think that that goes into a little bit of like delayed gratification. So it's like, what am I, what do I, what's my end goal? Um, and if my end goal is something bigger than like a flashy car and, and there's nothing wrong with it because like to some extent you've worked so hard that like you deserve something, you know? And so there's nothing wrong with that, but like it really does go back to like, what do I want out of life? What, what do I see really? How do I want to impact? That's the biggest thing for me. And so for me, I knew that, right? I knew that. So COVID wasn't, COVID was hard from a mental standpoint. Um, and like just being in, you know, being in the hospital, seeing death, seeing the fear, the chaos, like it was hard. But for me, I'm so grateful that like I did not suffer financially um, because I worked hard up until that point. And I knew that like, so what one day I'll take, give you a quick story. Um, a colleague, close colleague of mine was at work and she got a letter saying, um, me, you have a meeting tomorrow morning and tomorrow morning came and she was like, go. And that was a, that was a huge, um, that was a huge slap in our faces because it, at that point you realize that like, even us as physicians, like our jobs were not guaranteed. And so it's like, how do you set yourself up for whatever it is that comes your way? Um, and that was the big thing for me. And that's really when it hit me. And I said, in Kim, what are you doing to secure your tomorrow? You know, what are you doing that's going to like, it's going to set you up for like the next 10, the next 15 years, something that, like I said in the beginning, and I meant it, they did not teach us how to prepare for that. We learn. We we know medicine. Like if someone were to drop down right now, I would I would know what to do with my eyes closed. But do I know like where to invest? Do I know how to diversify? Do I know you know? Do I know all these other things? Do I know all these other asset classes? All these alternative asset classes that could truly help me build wealth, so that when I go to the hospital, I'm not worried about what my finances are doing. I'm not worried about my family is doing. You know, I'm there because I want to be there. And that was a you know that was a rude awakening for me and for a lot of my colleagues to be like, hey, what are we doing? How are we doing? And if it wasn't as important to them, I felt like it was my job. At that point, I felt like it was my job to bring it to the forefront, to like teach them to be like, hey, this is what I'm doing. Come to this webinar. I'm interviewing these people on these physicians who are doing really well in real estate. See, we can do this too. You know, and you don't have to be an active investor. You can be a passive investor. You know, you can just let your money work for you so that you can go to work and be like be present in that moment. That's kind of that's how it um, evolved for me. I, I I think what resonates to me as I listen to you share your story 
um, you know, completely different industry, right? I was in advertising yeah. and marketing, but a very similar kind of origin story as far as like what made me realize that I had to, you know, diversify from my W2 job where, you know, I was at General Motors and we went through a similar bankruptcy and we had a round of layoffs and, uh, you know, there's a guy who was, you know, kitty corner Timmy and he got let go. And I remember this was pretty early in my career, but I remember thinking that one, I felt really bad for that guy that, you know, he really didn't have a plan B and was left scrambling. Um, but I also realized that I didn't want to be in that position as well. Yep. You know, at some point, no matter what career you're in, no matter what company you work for, you can you're you can be let go. I mean, it's it's a numbers game. It's about profitability. It's about seniority. It's about all politics. There are a lot of reasons, right, that this can happen. So you have to ask yourself, what are you doing to secure your future? And it can't yep. be I'm just going to work harder, right? Um, certainly, that's an option, but. Um, I think what you found and what I found is the power of real estate to create yep. options and flexibility. And it's not to say leave your job and quit your job. Actually, I think it's the complete opposite. Yep. It gives you more flexibility so you can focus on your job yes. and not necessarily focus on how much money you have at this very moment. So that's the reason we love real estate investing. I know this reason that you love real estate investing is sharing that opportunity with so many other people in your network. Let's talk about that. So you mentioned that you did your first investment. You know, you did a couple more investments, I think 300 or so units total um, before starting to look at, you know, how do I take this and move to the general partnership side? Talk to us about what you were going through as that LP investor, especially the first deal you were looking at. Okay. So for a lot of, for a lot of us, you know, the first deal was 50,000 and initially um, I was very risk averse. And so 50,000 is, is a lot of money. It's not a lot of money, but it was like, well, where's that going? What is that going? You know, like, you know, and so in the beginning, there was a lot of fear, um, fear of the unknown, because I knew at that point, money in the bank was better than money elsewhere. That is not true anymore. I, I have learned better. I have, I have absolutely well, After these banks better. have just closed, I don't know if everybody <laughs> agrees, right? <laughs> so I have, I have learned absolutely that that's not true, but in my mind, and that was a mindset shift that I had yeah. to, um, and I had to switch. I will talk about that a little later, but, but so, but, but, but Dr. Nkim, I, I think that's an important point, right? Like the perception most people have is that money in the bank is quote unquote safe. It's secure. It's FDIC backed, right? So if you have money outside of putting it under your mattress, putting it in a bank is the most secure way of people thinking. And I think that for them to, to really step back and recognize and quite frankly, just challenge that notion. Don't just accept it as fact, challenge it. You I, know? I agree. Find places to invest where you have more either control or at least more knowledge of what's happening, or at least you can understand what that growth pattern is. But I think it's really important for people to, like you said, have a mindset shift and you don't just magically have it. You no. have to actually challenge the information that's put in front of you and ask why. And and I know that you've had to go through that. So 50,000 yes. is a lot of money is not really that much money. It kind of just yes. depends, right? But it's On, a big investment. Yes. It's a big yes. investment. So talk, go back to where and you were. So, right? so 50,000, so you're weighing that. And so I did, I started off with really vetting the sponsors. I learned about, even before I jumped in, I learned about what multifamily was, but that's because that's who I am. There's some people who just jumped in, but I needed to know, you know, I knew I was going to do it, but I needed to know with certainty. Um, if I lost the money, I would have been okay, but I wanted to know that this was the right thing to do with the money. And so, and I wanted to know, because I felt like this was probably, I knew that this was the the route that I would go. And so it was on me to do the research before. I vetted the sponsors. I vetted the location. I learned everything that I could as a passive investor. I asked questions. I interviewed all the team members. I was, I went above and beyond for just that my first 50,000 because I thought it was important to me. But at some point I had to take a risk. And at that point for me, it was a calculated risk. You know, I knew that everything. I knew not everything was certain, but I felt like I had known enough to jump in. And that's where sometimes we struggle with like analysis paralysis and we just keep looking, keep looking. But I knew at some point that I had to jump in. And I'm so grateful that I did because at that point I saw returns. I started seeing returns. I started seeing the money grow. And I was like, wow, this makes sense. It was at that point that I realized that money in the bank was not it. It was not, it was not serving me any purpose. And my 0.05% interest rate was just 
was nothing when I knew that I could make seven, eight, and I was actually seeing it. And so, so for me, that was a big deal. But like, I really mean it when I said like, there had to be a big mindset shift. The things that I knew, the limiting beliefs that I knew that were holding me down, I had to let go of them. You know, I had to be like, in camp, this isn't serving you well. Um, and, and in education and in taking action, those were the two big things for me that were able to help me leap. Like I said, I'm, I, I'm a lot less cautious but I was very cautious before and I didn't think it served me well. And so now that I, as long as I started letting go of some of those beliefs that were not serving me well, it was helping me make better decisions. And so when I decided, hey, I'm gonna jump in, it was with certainty. Um, even though nothing is 100% certain, I still felt a little bit better about it. And that's how I was able to make the leap. And as soon as I made the first leap, it all made sense that the second one was an easier decision. The third one was an easier decision. And I'm not saying that, you know, like you're not going to fail or things are not going to, you know, not going to go in your favor. But I am saying that like, I have learned in one of those mindset shifts is that like failure is okay. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. If, as long as, and it's really not failure. It's just one tiny setback in the future of all the possibilities that you can have. So I didn't, I didn't see it really it, it was it was such a cool like light bulb moment switch for me where I was like it's okay to fail like I learned so much from it and I'll use that next time and and so I didn't I wasn't worried anymore about failing I wasn't worried anymore about losing because I saw the upside I saw the potential I saw where it was going and for me it was a no-brainer and so that was the biggest thing that I would say in was that jump was that taking action was the education was the mindset shift and then that at that point where I was like okay you have to do it like you just just have to take action. And that's what I'm trying to teach. You know, that's what I'm trying to educate the healthcare professionals that are, you know, my investors, you know, it's, it really is it. I want you to vet me. I want you to see who I'm investing. I want you to see who the partners I'm partnering with. You know, I want you to learn. And then I want you to take action. And even if it's not with me, um, if it's, if you, you know, if, if, if someone else aligns with your goals and your vision, go with them. But at this point, I'm like, do something. And that's the biggest thing for me. And that's how I went from you know, to my first deal as a limited partner. What were some of the limiting beliefs that were holding you back? Oh, I can tell you that. So like stuff like, will I be successful? I'm not good enough. This isn't for me. Um, we're not supposed to do this. Stay in your lane. Um, those were the things that truly were holding me back. Like, could I, can I do this? You know, can I, I know medicine so well, can I switch? Um, you know, the identity, the identity is such a big deal and it's such a big thing. And I learned that like my identity was rooted in medicine because that's all I've done my whole life. But I realized that like, it's just who I, it's not who I am, it's what I do. And so now I know that like, I'm a physician, I'm a real estate investor, I'm all these other things and, and I can be that. And that, but, but that had to take some work. It wasn't a one day thing because like I had to show up in my full self for me, for my investors, for my partners, you know, for my, you know, for my, um, for my patients, you know, for my family, I had to be the truest version of myself. And that was what my identity was. It was no longer in like Dr. and Kim or in an active investor. It wasn't one thing. It was the culmination of everything that made me who I am. And truly, John, those were the things that I had to, um, I had to, I had to, like, I had to let go of, those are things I had to learn, those are things I had to endure, and those are things that I had to break through, that, like, I can sit here today and tell you, these are the things I've done, um, this is who I am, this is where I'm going, this is who I'm growing into, and I can say with confidence, not, you know, and it's not from a place of, like, um, pride, but it's more from a place of humility that, like, I knew the work that went into it, and I feel confident that, like, I know where I'm going now. I think there are a couple of takeaways for everyone, right? So for, the one is recognizing we all have limiting beliefs, right? Yes. And there's an image of who we are based on uh, previous information. And yeah. whenever you're looking to do something different professionally, you got to question it because it's a new endeavor, right? And especially yes. if you're, you're going to continue doing what you're doing. You're a doctor. You That's what you study. You, you have, you know, six, seven, eight, how many ever years of formal training uh, as a physician before you know, you, you formally, you know, kind of went into that space. So you have a lot of time vested as a doctor. Yeah. So it's, it's easy for the, us to understand why your mind is going to question you as a real estate investor. It's like, well, do you understand anything about real estate? Do you know how to invest? Do you know? How? And all these questions pop up and it's easy for you to, you know, to 
um, doubt yourself. And I think that's important for all of us to understand is that it's okay to have some of these questions. What's not okay is to just listen to that and say, no, I can't do it and, and cower away. What I would implore you to do is exactly what Dr. Income did, which is educate yourself, surround yes. yourself with people in this space, learn as much as you can, read books, listen to podcasts, attend events, join masterminds. That's going to help you get more and more comfortable. And eventually you're going to be able to build the information and the resources yeah. to overcome some of those doubts. But yeah. it's completely natural to to have some of those doubts on anything yeah. that is new. And, you know, I coach um, I coach my kids like football team and some other sports. And um, one of the things I always try to, you know, encourage them is like, hey, this is new for a lot of you kids. Don't expect to be great out of the gate. You know, expect to to have some success, expect to have some failure. That's part of learning. That's part of growth. And I really appreciate you sharing that you've come to grips with that because I think so many new investors are so concerned with losing their money. Well, what happens if the deal doesn't pan out, if I lose my money? Like it, it, it takes it takes some time to process that even if you lose money, you would still want to move forward and do a deal. And that may seem crazy, but you're moving forward in the direction you want to be. Um, the best yeah. example I could give is uh, a mentor of mine told me that, you know, his goal was to condition his mind to think like the kind of person he wanted to be. So if you want to oh, be a billionaire that. real estate investor, a billionaire real estate investor is going to go hunt for the next deal, no matter what happened with the last deal, right? It's just like yes. in sports, if you're a hitter, you know, you could strike out. If you think you're a home run hitter, you're going to go right back to the plate the next time and expect to hit a home yes. run, right? And it's a it's a mentality where you have to move on to the next player. Or, and I'm, I'm assuming in medicine is similar, right? You, If you have a, a bad day, a patient, you can't help as much as you would have liked. You can't let that ruin the experience nope. for the next one. You've got to be able to, you know, compartmentalize and move on. And I think that's a really important aspect is, you know, so many people get burned off of one investment or, or one experience. And then they decide, well, this isn't for me or real estate's not for me. And it always makes me, you know, disappointed that someone could say, hey, this strategy that has helped 90% of, you know, the millionaires in this country isn't for me. It's like, uh, I, I think it is. I think maybe your strategy was off or maybe you didn't do enough things with the right partnerships or whatever it is. But it's really important to recognize that, hey, this is still a great strategy, even yes. if that particular execution didn't go as according to plan. Um, when you're talking to these, you know, physicians, other potential investors, um, I assume some of their concerns are similar to what you experienced. But I also would imagine that there are other questions or uh, things that come up that maybe you weren't anticipating. What are some of those common things that you see? So there are two um people are still people, even if they're physicians. So there's two schools um, kind of, of thoughts. The first one is some of the investors, some of the physician investors I've met are just completely opposed to this um, because they work hard and they're like, you know what? I, I trust the stock market. Look at what it's done. But, you know, I know my 401k and they're okay with that. And no matter, I can teach and I can educate and I can empower but some of them are just like, this is what I know. This is probably what I'm going to keep doing. Um, and so some of those questions are more like, can you guarantee me? Well, nothing in life is guaranteed. So like, except breath, like even that, you know, that's finite. But like, you know, so nothing truly is guaranteed. So when you ask me, can I guarantee you? You know, I can tell you, I can show you the numbers and I can tell you, th this is why I'm doing it. These are the risks. They are risk in everything. But this is how we mitigate some of these risks. And this is why I'm doing it. So I can't guarantee 100 percent, but I can tell you this is a lot safer because we're thinking about it long term. So we're not here to make a quick, you know, this is not a get rich quick scheme. This is and we're looking at this in the future. This is like one investment after the other. This is building on something big so that like eventually passive income is generating more money than your active income. And that's when truly you're financially free. And so those kind of questions are questions that like I will just tell you what I know, but I can't guarantee you. And so in essence, those people probably won't invest. And then there are other people, other physicians who get this, who completely, completely get this. And I'll give you an example. One of my colleagues um, with that first deal that I just did, he invested. And I remember sending him the PPM and I said, hey, you have to read this. And he's like, listen, 
I know you, I like you, and I trust you. And he's like, if you're behind this, then I'm behind you. And he goes, I understand the risk. He says, nothing is, you know, nothing is 100%. And so I'm, and I said, I still want you to read it. But he was just like, listen, I get it. He goes, I've seen the work that you put into it. And so some people see that and they get it, you know. So in that school of thought, it was it, in that, those, that group, that sect of people, they get it. They get proof of concept even before they get proof of concept. And so those are kind of the two schools of people that I've been dealing with. But, you know, a lot of the questions are, you know, a lot of questions are more like simple questions that really, truly most investors would ask, which is, why are you picking where you're picking? Where are you guys looking? How are you vetting these deals? Who are you working with? Um, you know, like what happens? You know, a lot of them. And then there's fear. A lot of questions I get is like, well, what if I want my money tomorrow? And I'm like, well, this is not this is not as liquid. So I, before you do it, you have to know that this is we're in this for three to five years, you know. And so there's there's no out, you know. And and a lot of these people, you know, a lot of our healthcare professionals have disposable income. They've grown a nest egg. So fifty thousand is not like it's not a blow in the stomach for them. And so when I asked when they asked that question of what if I need it tomorrow? I don't really think it's what if I need it tomorrow. It's really fear of like, what will, I'm not sure what's going to happen. So I want to make sure that if something were to happen, I can pull it out. And so, and so that comes with education. And a lot of these questions and a lot of these fears can be truly mitigated with education. And I've learned that, that the more you know, the more, you, the more resources you provide, the more you're available to have these conversations and to teach them these questions, just like they dissipate, they disappear and they feel more confident. But it's, and that's where the work has been for me, you know, before in that, just go back to a little bit of that mindset shift where be, I didn't understand the power of investing in yourself. You know, I understood paying hundred thousand dollars for an education. Um, and I understood, like, I saw that but I didn't understand what it meant to really truly like invest in myself, invest in my future, pay for coaching, you know, pay for a business mentor, things that would enrich me as a person so that I would be better equipped to serve you. And so the more, you know, with the, like going back to the questions now, like the more I've done that, the more I can show up and be like, I understand where you're coming from. I understand your fears. This is how we're going to mitigate it. So a lot of the questions that I've gotten are truly based on lack of education and fear of just doing something new. And the more they see me, the more they talk about it, you know, and that's why, you know, I'm like, um, that's why I've, I've committed to like doing webinars, you know, really to putting myself out there and to also bring other real estate professionals to let them see, hey, this is working. This is how people are doing this. Let's jump in. Like it's high time that we don't have a seat at the table. I, I absolutely love everything you just said, because it's so important to understand the questions, the concerns, the fears that so many people have. And the reality is, it's just not going to be for some people, right? Yes. Um, and, and you've got to come to grips with that. Like, you're not going to get everybody to see things the way you see things. They have a different, you know, financial background, financial experiences, the different relationship with money. Yes. And you can't make everybody see it the way you do. With that said, you mentioned that one investor who didn't even read the PPM because he's like, hey, I know you like you trust you. I know how much work you've put into this. Yeah. So if you're behind this, I'm behind you. And I think that's a testament to building a brand. And yeah. I think some people get confused when we talk about a brand and they think about having a pretty website and nice logos and graphics. A brand is who you are when people aren't in the room, right? A brand is what people say about you when you're not there. You know, I, like I can that. try to craft that with messaging and advertising and stuff like that. But a brand is what people think about Dr. and Kim when she's not there to talk about herself. And doing the things that you've done, the webinars, the, you know, going to the events, the podcast, all those things, well, people see you, they see you doing that. So they know that you're investing the time and energy. You've invested yourself, right? You've invested in these deals as an LP investor before moving to the GP side. So that credibility is there because they're watching you. And if you're looking to raise money for deals, you know, one thing we tell all of our clients, and I think it's really important, is how we kind of started building and getting that traction in our business. You've got to build in public, right? You've got to find a way to create a, a thought leadership platform or to have some way to share what it is you're doing, why you're doing it, and bring on other people, other experts who can share why this is a great tool or why this is a great vehicle to create wealth. You know, don't expect just to call five guys you went to school with and say, hey, I'm doing this real estate deal. Do you want to put up 100K? If you got it like that, great. <laughs> but for most people, 
they're going to need to see that you're committed to this, that you're dedicated, that you're educated, that you're willing to invest your money, that you've got skin in the game. They yes. want to see that level of commitment and they want to know, like, and trust you and your knowledge base uh, before they make that commitment for themselves. So if you can do that, you're going to see way more success. And if you simply try to call some, some, you know, some old college friends and hope that it works out from that standpoint. So really great information. I love the way you kind of broke down your steps as far as the way you educated yourself, the way you shared what you were doing through these different webinars, reaching out to people in your network, and then something that's kind of subtle, but you kind of allow people to kind of go at their own pace, right? So you were doing these webinars. It wasn't like you said, here's the deal, check yeah. out this webinar. It was more about, let me help you with some of the concepts or why we're doing this and bringing these people on. And yes. that allows people to kind of educate themselves a little bit and maybe ask better questions. And then I think you, you can probably identify, well, who's really serious about these opportunities? Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. Who needs way more time to to process this and to get comfortable with it? And then who are people who are, are flat, you know, flat out just not going <laughs> to move forward with this? And that's fine no matter what. You know, we're not salesmen trying to trying to pitch no. people this. No. The, the goal and the opportunity is simply to let people know that, hey, there's an opportunity out here to yes. to grow your financial future. Um, if you're interested, you know, there's a lot of information that we're willing to share to help you learn more. Uh, what do you think was the, I think the, the, the biggest help for you to get comfortable working with other investors as opposed to simply just being an LP yourself? So the, the biggest thing for me that like helped me is that I'm not, I'm going to be honest when I showed, when I show up, you know, as someone, as a physician, that builds credibility alone. So that helps me um, kind of already have a foundation and someone who is somewhat trustworthy. I don't take that for granted. And so I use that to my advantage in that, like, now I can show up as that and still say, hey, I've put in the work. I This is all the things that I've done. I've enjoyed it every step of the way, but I want you to see, you said something really profound is that like, I have I have learned publicly, you know, I jumped on LinkedIn, I didn't have any social media in January. And I just said, I'm going to show up and I'm going to walk people through what I'm doing, what I'm thinking, you know, the struggles, the mental struggles, the mindset shift. I talked about it every day. I said, these are the things I'm doing. This is how I'm investing. If an investor asked me a question, I put it on LinkedIn and I said, hey, this is what they said. This is how I answered it. Now, my questions weren't always right. You know, my answers weren't always right, but I was just like, so the biggest thing for me that has helped me is authenticity. You know, I, I have learned that like, I can only be in chem and this is who you can see. Yes, I'm a work in progress and the, there are things I need to fix. But for the most part, like I can't be anyone else. And that the facade of who I try to be, it will only last a day or two or three. But like who you see here is who I am. And then people resonate with that. People resonate with, okay, this is her, you know, this is who she is. She's a physician. Now she's trying to do this. We see you, we see the work that you're putting. And that's how I, that's how I present myself. You know, so I, um, I shared with you earlier, but like I did something big and I sponsored a physician conference and they had seen me as a physician for so long. And this time I said, hey, this is in chem, the physician that you know, the ER physician that you know, and now the real estate investor. This is all the things, these are all the things that I've done. This is where I am today. This is where I'm going. Come alongside this journey with me. Um, and that's that's literally the story I shared. I stood and I just said, this is who Phoenix Capital is. This is what we're building. Um, we This is where we started. We're new, but we have potential to grow. So I, I showed up as my authentic self. I didn't lie. I didn't build this big thing that I'm not. I just said, this is the foundation. You know me. Let's work together. Um, and I'm and I I have learned through like just surrounding myself with people who are like minded. Like you said, we're not gonna. I'm not selling this. I've already gotten proof of concept for myself, and I want you to do it too. And that's the angle that I'm coming from. So it's not you're not. A lot of some people will not come with me on my first deal. You know, the first deal it was truly like friends, colleagues who just were like, I, I saw you day one. I saw you. I'm in it. You know, I didn't have to sell it at all. I literally had conversations and the answers were yes. And so I think that, you know, the more that I put myself out there, the more I let people see who I am, what Inkem is about, what Phoenix is about. And I think that natural progression is how people, how we're going to get investors. So I'm not worried about you today. You know, I just want you to sit like, 
like I did. I sat on the sidelines and I learned because not everyone is like, not everyone's like you, John. Like, you're like the first time I got it, I'm jumping in. Some people just want to see you lurk in the background, you know, and see what you're doing and then be like, okay, I get it. She gets it. Let me, let me try. And that's kind of, that's my approach truly. That's my approach to investors is that like, I am who I am, the things I can't change, um, but I am learning, I'm growing. I've seen this, I get this, and now I wanna teach you. I wanna educate, I wanna empower you, come alongside with me. That's, I don't know if that's an approach or that's a strategy, but that's what I'm doing. Well, I, I love it all. And I will say for our listeners, if you're asking yourself, well, you know, great, you know, Dr. Inkim has, you know, medical degree and she's a doctor, of course, people are gonna respect her and listen to her. Maybe you don't have that, what I would say is there is always going to be an audience of people that yes. you are uniquely positioned to connect yes. with. So yes. figure out who that is for you, you know, figure out, you know, how do you let them know what you're doing, build those connections. If you need to, you know, again, join masterminds, get a coach, yes. get a mentor, build your credibility and show these individuals what you're doing in this space and why they should be investing. And I think the biggest thing is do it out of service. Don't do it just because you can make money in it, but you did it to help these physicians understand, mm -hmm. hey, you don't want to get let go and called into the office one day and be left scratch your head. So starting to invest passively, starting to create that passive income, that gives you more power and control of your life. Uh, yeah. Again, if you want to connect with Dr. Income, you know, she's got a great information. She's on LinkedIn. We'll put our, her uh, LinkedIn link in the show notes. You can also check out her website. So go to P-H-E invest. That's P H E invest c sorry it's PhD. C. phc man i am my i can't even read my own handwriting today phc <laughs> invest which makes way more sense i don't know what the e is uh phc invest.com and uh you can connect and, and get more information there right now we're going to go to our round of insights are you ready Ooh. yes i'm ready give me a failure or an apparent failure that sets you up for later success so um, I was kind of really thinking about this and this answer might be a little vague, but it's the truth. I, the lack of taking action, um, it truly, just, I can't look back, you know, there's, you can only learn looking forward. You can only connect the dots looking forward, but like, I just think if I had taken action sooner, I would be leaps and bounds where I am today. But, and so I'm, this is for someone who is maybe five years behind me, just do it just jump in take action like you will see fruit don't be afraid that fear of failure literally is like a magnet to the ground that's holding you down you have to like pull against it because you will go far and so that has I'm, I'm glad that I realized that today because I know that that will take me leaps and bounds forward. I wish I realized it five years ago, but that's okay. And that truly is, it's not one thing, but it's that concept of like not taking action and being terribly afraid of whatever. Give me a digital or mobile resource you recommend for your business. ChatGPT. Um, we are, I, I really think that like where technology is going, I think that we need to learn how to use it. Um, I don't think ChatGPT is going to take your job. I think it's a person who knows how to use it really, really well, um, who knows how to prompt, who knows what it's all about. So I think that like where we are today, I think that we just need to leverage AI in general uh, to kind of help us move our business forward. Give me a book that's, uh, let me say it again. Give me a book that you've recommended or gifted the most in the last year. I have enjoyed reading The Alchemist and I like stories. And so it's just, it's a story about like following your personal legend. Like what is your story? What is your purpose? Um, and and go after it with everything that you've got. I think that I, I just, it's a small read. It's a quick read and it's a good story, but the concept and the principles in it are so profound, which is, go after what you know is yours figure out your purpose figure out your why and chase it relentlessly what's a daily habit that helps you stay focused on your goals um i have i picked up gratitude journaling uh last year and january 1 i sat down and i reread everything and i was blown away and so i try to every day i just try to write what i'm thankful for who i forgive my big ideas for the day um, and so like when you go back and you read those, it's just amazing to see how you've grown, how you, what, you know, like at the end of the day, you write like what you, what was successful, what were some woes and just to go back and look at it, I think it has helped me. It's just helped me realize that life is short and the important things need to be important. 
Give me your number one insight for multifamily investing. Um, oh, I talked about it earlier. I think that like, I think diversification um, is key whether it's different location, different type of asset class. I think that it builds creativity. I think that it mitigates risk. Um, and I think that you can be creative in what you do if you just spread out. All right, and you're in Nashville. So give me your favorite yeah. place to grab a bite to eat. Oh, um, oh, I just had, I just went to a really, really nice sushi restaurant, uh, Virago. It was like a really cool, neat area and it was fun. And they had this wasabi martini that was like, weirdly really good but the sushi is good too <laughs> oh man sounds uh interesting i'll, I'll say that it sounds interesting uh spicy it's uh, very spicy <laughs> well dr Inkim, i really appreciate our conversation today you talked about kind of your journey you know being in the medical field as an er uh, and then really recognizing that, hey, between lifestyle creep and having more flexibility, you really need to find a way to create more passive income. You turn to real estate, uh, multifamily investments, did about 300 units as an LP investor before transitioning more to the GP side and helping other physicians and other professionals invest in real estate. And, you know, talked about the limiting beliefs that you had to overcome. You talked about, you know, just you know, investor feedback and questions and recognizing that, hey, for some people, it just wasn't going to be a fit. And for other people, they watched what you were doing in that commitment and that made them comfortable. I just think it's really valuable for us to to learn from someone like you, learning from your story, your journey, and hearing more about what we can do to help grow our own portfolio and our own financials. Uh, again, if anybody wants to learn more, they can connect with you on LinkedIn. Also go to your website, phcinvest.com, uh, phcinvest dot com. Uh, Dr. Inkem, I want to thank you again for being a great guest and coming on Multifamily Insights. We look forward to staying in touch with you and hope you have a great day. Thank you so much. John, really, I meant it when I said in the beginning, I've been watching, following you, and it's been an honor to just like have this conversation with you. And thank you for making it easy and seamless. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a good one. Okay. You too. Bye.